Good morning, everyone. Yay, we made it to another day. <laughs> How's everyone doing? Blessed and highly favored. Yes, you are. Yes. <laughs> oh, oh, pastor, my back. My back is sore. <laughs> oh, oh, my neck. <laughs> back ache. It's okay. By the time we finish, your back will be more <laughs> relaxed. Your yeah. physical bodies will be more relaxed. Your minds will be more relaxed. Yeah, but the up and down the stairs everywhere, 14,000 steps that day, you know, that is, with, <laughs> that is with the phone with me. And uh, when the phone is not with me, I don't know how many, how many other thousands. <laughs> It's getting stronger. We're getting stronger. Yeah. We're hiking. <laughs> welcome. Yeah, welcome. Welcome to the new exercise. Welcome to the new exercise. Two story house, yes. Three. Oh, see, that's one extra story that you can work. <laughs> oh, that is beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful. All right, who wants to pray us in? Anyone? Anyone? Yeah, I will. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for a beautiful morning. Yeah. And uh, we are praying for a better weather, cooler. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, we're looking forward to receive the new uh, revelation this morning. Yes, indeed. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bless you. All right, who has a praise report? Everyone has a praise report, even the sore back praise report. <laughs> Pastor. Yes. I have a sore finger pointing everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 I think it's down there. It's right? down there. <laughs> Very tight finger. <laughs> But isn't that the joy and the beauty of it all? Yes. yes. In that moment, that's when you can create more and more and more and more. Mm -hmm. In that moment, that's when more is expanded. That's when you are at your highest peak to ask and it is given to you because mm -hmm. there's no thought of resistance to you. Yes. So we would say, ride that wave. Be like a surfer, man. Uh -huh. <laughs> And it's interesting, we was watching a video of a surfer, and there was a surfer who saw this big wave, and we could tell that he was a novice, and he jumped up on the surf, and all of a sudden, the board went one way, he went that way. <laughs> and then the next clip was an experienced surfer who saw that wave, begin to pedal with that wave, got in the groove of that wave, finally stood up, and rode that thing all the way, man, in the tunnel. And he was recording it. Who had a better ride? The one who made it through or the one who tumbled off the board? <laughs> well, the one who tumbled, he still had an okay time, but he would have right to ride that wave. So now he's going to start all over into the next big wave. Yes. Indeed. All righty. Any other praise reports, testimonies? I do. Who said that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we have tons, tons, tons. Our garden vessel is is out of control. So, Sudi, Lily, y'all gonna have to, Melissa, y'all gonna have to come down. We have too many grapes, too many nickel oh. beans, too many tomatoes, <laughs> too many green onions. Oh. Uh, the corn, eh, nah. Eh. <laughs> Pray for the corn, okay? <laughs> oh. <laughs> but we have, uh, oh, we have pomegranate trees. Yes. Ooh. We have a lot of them. A lot. For the fruits. Yes, so we have a lot of them. Oh, wow. This morning, we're going to be talking about the rock of salvation. Yes, yes, yes. Come on, get excited. Come on. Yes, indeed. The rock of salvation. What is the rock of salvation? Anyone want to take a guess? Anyone? 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 Cricket? 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 It's okay. <laughs> That's the silence. <laughs> Don't know what it is. Well, think about what we taught you about what salvation was. 
Did you all forget what salvation was? Yes, I know you did. That's why we brought it up again. Well, think about salvation is being saved per se, what you were taught, correct? Mm -hmm. Now, what were you saved from? The error of your ways, how you think. This is why when the Christ conscience came, he said, let this mind be in you. What type of mind did he have? He had a what? A loving mind. Yes. He had a mind who thought like God, universal God, unconditional loving God. Oh, now it gets good. So now if we add the word rock, what do we have now? Solidarity. Now, we didn't say how big the rock was. <laughs> Is it a mountain size rock? <laughs> Or is it a small rock? Yeah. <laughs> or the or the diamond on the feet, see? But nevertheless, it always signifies something sturdy, something strong, something that's almost unbreakable, if you will. Yes. That is when you begin to get into the mind of Christ. It is a solid state of unconditional love on this is what I want. This is why I want it. Mm. How is it obtained? We just told you. <laughs> well, the first thing is you have to get rid of the judgment. That's the quickest way. Get rid of the judgment against people, against yourselves, against things. Forgive is the biggest, 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 biggest thing that we can do is forgive self and forgive others. But if people don't <clears throat> forgive themselves and forgive others, then how can salvation come? That makes sense? Because within that thinking, we're still pitting ourselves one against another instead of saying, that's my brother or my sister, regardless of what their beliefs are, regardless of what their traditions are, regardless of what their behavior are. What? Yes. But what if they act like a narcissist, Pastor? Well, <laughs> well, you still have to do what? Love them. Doesn't it say love your enemies? He says, I came to give you what? New commandment. In order to have a salvation, you have to have a new way of thinking. That way of thinking is what? Love. Is that right? And then two, what people don't want to do is put their face on that narcissist or that thing that they're judging. They don't want to do it. So you have to change your mind. Number three, blank is the only thing in the world that cannot change. Anyone know what it is? Uh, love, yes. unconditional love. Uh -uh. Hmm. Yes. Second paragraph. <laughs> Who said that? <laughs> Holy Spirit. Yes, he did. Sin. Sin is the only thing in all the world that cannot change. It is immutable, and on its changelessness, the world depends upon it. Um, yes? There's no sin, Pastor. We know that, but look at the people who still believe in that. <clears throat> and they base the world around it. Right or wrong? How many people do you come across that, that throw that in your face or insinuate, whether it be through a judgment or a disapproval or a disagreement or even an argument? All the same thing. Right? Yeah. Only difference is, is when they say that one in terms of sin, it is unforgivable. Yes. It is punishable by death. Mm -hmm. But then what's an error? <clears throat> a mistake. Yeah. So they cannot see the sin as an error, but the Holy Spirit takes the sin and says, hey, this is just a mistake because unconditional love sees nothing wrong. Mm -hmm. That makes mm -hmm. sense? <clears throat> yes. But this is why we have to teach the world to change the way they think, <clears throat> mm -hmm. especially when they're in a religious mindset. When the master Jesus came <clears throat> and hit this planet, I'm going to paraphrase. He says, you already had religion here. He said, I came to give you a new commandment. Y'all couldn't follow the old laws. Mm -hmm. So he had to come in and institute a different mindset. Mm -hmm. 
Does that make sense? Yes. Question number four, blank. Is rebirth of the idea no one can lose for anyone to gain? Salvation. Oh, good. Oh, there it is. Yes, absolutely. Salvation is rebirth of the idea no one can lose for anyone to gain. Isn't that how the world is when we begin to compete against another? My church versus your church, my church bigger than church. I got more congregation members than your congregation member. We make more money and blah, blah, blah. And we even take it outside of that into the homes. And then we begin to compete with other members, other neighbors, strangers. That's why you came up with the phrase keeping up with the Joneses because you're looking around being nosy, seeing what they got. <laughs> All right, our declaration, salvation is sanity being restored. Yes. Salvation is sanity being restored. Everybody understand that? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, can someone read the first one while I take a pull? Yet if the Holy Spirit can commute to this sentence that you laid upon yourself into a blessing, then it cannot be a sin. Sin is the only thing uh, all the world, in all the world that cannot change. It is immutable, and on its changelessness, the world depends. The magic of the world can seem to hide the pain of sin from sinners, and this is with the, and with, uh, how you pronounce that? Gul? You? You? Mm -hmm. Yet each one knows the cause of sin is death. Mm. And so it is. For sin is a request for death. The wish to make this world function sure as love, dependable as heaven, and as strong real, as God himself. Let me pause you real quick. Sorry to interrupt, but it's very important because you are all taught in your religious text that the wages of sin is what? Death. Death. But now, when you look at what Sudi just read, yet each one knows the cost of sin is death, and so it is for sin is a request for what? Death. A wish to make this world's function sure as love dependable as heaven as strong as God himself, right? Mm. The world is safe from love to everyone who thinks sin is possible, nor will it change. Yet, it is it, yet is it possible what God created not should share the attributes of his creation when it opposes it in every single way? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you, Sudi, for that. Yes. We had to jump in because it has been taught so much. I've heard that so much when I was coming all the way up. The wages of sin, debt, wages of sin, debt, wages of sin, debt. And I thought, well, we're all going to die. <laughs> so what is, what is the opposite of that? You know, it was always that emphasis. But then the master came along and says, I came to give you what? Eternal life. I came to give you eternal life. So how could the wages of sin be death when the master came and says, I came to give you what? Eternal life. It was through the salvation of the forgiveness. Does that make sense? So he taught us we have to also what? Forgive. But hard to forgive when we're holding people in judgment, holding people in separation, holding people in anger, hate, lust, jealousy, fear, whatever. It cannot be the sinner's wish for death is just as strong as God's will for life. This is why he sent his son. For God so loved the world, he what? Sent his own begotten son. Why did he send him? Because he loved the world. So if he loved the world, he had to love everything that he created within it and send a messenger of what? Love. I gave me give you a new commandment. He, did you know Jesus told his mother at a very young age when he was lost that he was about his father's business? <laughs> And he didn't get a whooping for it. <laughs> because mother because mother Mary knew what he meant. Yeah. He was about the father's business. The father's business was about what? Love. Because God is what? Unconditional love. This is why he came to give you what? Eternal life. Because there's love in life. Nor can the basis of a world. God did not make be firm and sure as heaven. How could it be that hell and heaven are the same? And is it possible that what God did not will cannot be changed? What is immutable besides God's will? 
And what can share its attribute except itself? What wish can rise against God's will and be immutable? <clears throat> Everybody know what immutable means? <clears throat> That's a big word. Huh? Immutable. immutable. Anybody know what that word means? No, uh, You're throwing it around, so go someone Google it. Mute. Yeah, technology. Mute means, if mute I, means I, to silence somebody, right? Huh? To mute means to silence somebody, right? Immutable. No, it cannot change. It cannot change. Immutable is never changing. Yeah, your, your, it's not your, mutable. Your spirit is immutable because God created it and it never changes, right? Mm. What would be immutable? Spirit? Yes. Mm. Your relationship to your children, your relationship to things is immutable and never changes. You can say you disown it all you want, but still blood. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. If we say a word that you don't understand, say, Pastor, we don't know that word. <laughs> yeah. If you could realize nothing is changeless but the will of God, this course will not be difficult for you or anyone else. For it is this that you do not believe. Yet there is nothing else you could believe if you but looked at what it really is. How do we walk? By faith and not by what? Sight. Sight. Most people walk by sight, have no faith, and then judge what they see. <laughs> so let us go back to what we said before and think of it more carefully. It must be so that either God is mad or is this world a place of madness? Is God mad or is this a place of madness? <laughs> you would say this is a place of what? Of madness. madness. Mm -hmm. So God could not be what? Mad. Mm -hmm. Not one of God makes any sense at all within this world. This is why in the old scriptures he says, your thoughts are not my thoughts and your ways are not my ways. So in other words, we as humans have to get our thoughts and our ways up to God's thoughts and ways. This is why he sent the masters to show us how to have our thoughts and ways. And never once did they say, oh no, you can, you can achieve close to me, but you cannot be me. Every last one of them said, you can be me and greater, right? Mm. So and this this word mad is referring to crazy, right? Correct. Insane. Insane. Insane versus sane. So when we say mad, not in terms of I am mad at Melissa. We're talking everything we talk here is terms of your consciousness. Because we're only dealing with the consciousness because that is what really dictates well, that's really all there is, but how to manage your consciousness. How to manage your Christ consciousness. Does that make sense? Once you understand how to manage your Christ consciousness and learn how to forgive, how to love, how not to judge, how not to separate, how to unify, man, now everything in the world starts making sense. Because now you're seeing it from an unconditional loving perspective. Does that kind of make sense? Yes, no, maybe so. Dancing. Yes. Okay. And nothing that the world believes as true has any meaning is insanity. This is why in many scriptures it said this world is not your home. What? You're just passing through. Yeah. You're in the world, but not what? Of the world. Uh -huh. And what is madness cannot be the truth. Hmm. The truth will make you what? Free. 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 Absolutely. But many don't want to know the truth because they don't know what the truth is because it was never taught to them or shown to them. How many of you were taught how to forgive from your parents? Don't raise your hand. Don't, don't, don't rat them out. <laughs> how many of them taught you how 
to love. Don't raise your hand. Don't 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 rat him out. But you see what we're what we're saying. Right? We'll even go this far. How many of them taught you about sex? Don't put your hands up. Oh. So see, see the lack of so now. Look at the lack of information. See so you now. We'll, we'll leave that thought right there. Yes. <laughs> It's self-discovery. Yeah, but think about it. Who wants to self-discover when I have a teacher who's been there and experienced? Why would I shame this that is natural? It's natural. It is natural like anything going up to brush your teeth or wash your face or going to poop or pee. No difference. It's natural. People think put stars on pedestal and act like they don't go do the number one and number two. <laughs> They make it seem like they're very superficial or what? Very fake, inhuman, if you will. Superstars, they make them beyond the reach of human mm -hmm. based on their gift or talent. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> if one belief so deeply valued here were true, then every thought God ever had is an illusion. And if but one thought, if God is true, that all beliefs the world gives any meaning to are false and makes no sense at all. So it says, so let God be true and let what? Every man be a what? Liar. Mm. <laughs> now it makes sense, right? <laughs> this is the choice you all make. Do not attempt to see it differently, nor twist it into something it is not. For only this decision can you make. The rest is up to God and not to you. Thank God for that. Mm. How to make a big decision like that. I, my little finite mind can't handle that much. <laughs> here's, a, here's a side note. What is your difference between your question mark and your exclamation point? What is the difference? Hmm. We're going to give you something very important, a side note to this conversation, and we will give you the answer. But do you all know the difference between your question mark and your exclamation mark? Hmm. Don't know. Because your question mark is the question. Your explanation is what? The formation. The what? It is the it is the solidarity, is it not? It's the fact. Mm -hmm. All you humans do, watch this, all you did was take your explanation and bend it <laughs> and made it a question. If you unbend your question and turn it into an explanation, you will get more. But nowadays, they have the question mark plus the exclamation together. Because they're confused, so they're confused so they don't know what to do. <laughs> so they got to keep putting these symbols to try to express what they think. So, so, so uh, to make the question mark into an exclamation mark, so we have to uh, change the question into a what statement of fact huh make it an explanation when you explain when you put your explanation on it are you not decreeing it is it not a declaration is it not a i'm putting my foot down this is where it's going to be stanley you're on punishment explanation point Answering your grounded, exclamation point. Right? Hmm. Yes. Yeah. So now the truth is to turn that question into an explanation. So how to convert that question into exclamation? Mm, easy. With uh, ask, uh, is it ask the uh, Holy Spirit or? Yes, absolutely. Always ask the Holy Spirit. But think about it. When you all ask a question, underlyingly, you all know the answer. 
As soon as you ask the question, you all know the answer. It is just hidden. Because you start looking and seeking. Yeah, it's hidden. <laughs> that is a the, that is the magic answer. It's hidden, yeah. But now when you look away from the question you ask, what happens when you turn to look back at again? The answer comes, does it not? Hmm. Funny how that works. <laughs> because you stopped asking the question and put an exclamation point. So you made that little hook and you straightened it. <laughs> so when you decree and declare a thing, you're bold coming to the throne of God. You're asking and demanding, this is what I want. This is why I want it. Did you notice the question in there? This is what I want. This is why I want it. Mm -hmm. Yes, Lily. Um, it's just uh, about your your mindset and then the, the tone that you have, right? It's the same thing. It can be the same set of words that you want to say, but say in a um, more definite, affirming way. Yes. Say it as if it's already done. Say it it is it already happened. Say it as if it's in the now, now, now. Mm -hmm. and be in the emotion of believing that it is what? In the now. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things what? Not seen. Mm -hmm. But people don't believe in the now nor the faith because they were not taught neither of the two. Most people don't believe what they're wanting because it hasn't come the way they were wanting it to come just that for now we no longer ask we we no longer ask we just state what we want what man he says come to the throne what boldly and make your request made what no asking is what given to you yeah well there's nothing there's no barrier there's no resistance there's nothing hard about it other than as lily said how you perceive it how you Believe. Belief and your faith are the same thing. Faith and belief are the same thing. All right. Where were we? Oh, thank you for that side note. We had to teach you that. <laughs> because it is important. For only decision you can make, the rest is up to God and not to you. To justify one value that the world upholds is to deny your Father, which is in heaven, sanity and yours. For God and his beloved Son do not think differently. This is why many think punishing vengeful God. But then the master says, I'm about my father's business. Unconditional love. Here I come to give you a new, a new commandment. Who? From the father. So now vengeful and punishment could not be in the equation, could it? For God and his beloved son do not think differently. And it is the agreement of their thought that makes the son a co-creator with the mind whose thought created him. Let this mind be in you, right? So now you have the same mind as who? God's. Once we let go of jealousy, fear. This is why he said God did not give you what? Fear, but what? Power, love, and a sound mind. Once we let go of that fear, that anxiety, that depression, that lack, that hate, that anger, that whatever it is that is in a low vibration that doesn't make us feel well, and we get into the more loving aspect of the things, now we'll start seeing more prayers being answered because now we're thinking like him. That makes sense? So, if he or she chooses to believe one thought opposed to truth, they have decided they are not their father's son because the son is mad. In other words, insane. And sanity, and sanity, and sanity must lie apart from both the father and the son. This most people believe. Many believe punishing God, but then they forget about what the master came and taught. They never connected to. 
They always try to separate the two. Does that make sense? Yes. Think not that this belief depends upon the form it takes. Who thinks the world is sane in any way, is justified in anything it thinks, or is maintained by any form of reason, believes this to be true? Sin is not real because the Father and the Son are not insane. The world is meaningless because it rests on sin. Who could create the changeless if it does not rest on truth? The Holy Spirit has the power to change the whole foundation of the world you see to something else, a basis not insane on which the same perception can be based, another world proceed, and one in which nothing is contradicted that would lead the Son of God to sanity and joy. Nothing attests to death and cruelty, to separation and to differences. For here, if everything perceived as one, and no one loses that each one may what gain so now when my cup overflows i have more than enough to give to my fellow brother or sister because i see i got more i get more you've all heard the, the phrase the rich get richer and the poor get poor well this helps you get out of that mentality because what if all were rich Game changer. Test everything that you believe against this one requirement and understand that everything that meets this one demand is worthy of your faith, but nothing else. Listen to this carefully. What is not love is sin, and either one perceives the other as insane and meaningless. Love is the basis for a world perceived as holy mad to sinners who believe theirs is the way to sanity. But sin is equally insane within the sight of love whose gentle eyes would look beyond the madness and rest peacefully on truth. Each sees a world immutable, that means changeless, as each defines the changeless and eternal truth of what you are. I came to what? Give you what? Eternal life. And each reflects a view of what the Father, which is in heaven, and the Son must be to make that viewpoint meaningful and sane. Your oh, 1111. We thank you for upgrades, downloads, and activations. And so it is. Exclamation point. Mm. <laughs> Your special function is the special form in which the fact that God is not insane appears most sensible and meaningful to you. The content is the same. The form is suited to your special needs and to your special time and place in which you think you find yourself and where you can be free of place and time and all that you believe must limit you. The Son of God cannot be bound by time nor place nor anything God did not will. Yet, if God's will is seen as madness, then the form of sanity which makes it most acceptable to those who are insane requires special choice. Nor can this choice be made by the insane whose problem is their choice are not free and made with reason and light of sense. It would be massive to entrust salvation to the insane because God is not mad. Has God appointed one as sane as he to raise a saner world to meet the sight of everyone who chose insanity as their salvation. To this one is given the choice of form most suitable to them, one in which will not attack the world they see. Wow, wouldn't that be something? Mm -hmm. yeah. But enter into it quietness and show them they are mad. This one but points to an alternative, another way of looking at what they have seen before and recognized as the world in which they live and thought they understood before. Can someone read the next one, please? <clears throat> now, yeah. must question this. Now, must they question this. Because the form of the alternative is one which they cannot deny, nor overlook, nor fail 
completely to perceive at all. Do each piece or her special function is designed to be perceived as possible and more and more desired as it proves to them that it is an alternative they really want. Mm -hmm. From this position, does his or her sinfulness and all the sin he or she sees within the world offer him or her less and less mm -hmm. until he or she comes to understand it costs them his or her sanity and stands between him or her and whatever hope he or she has of being saved? Mm -hmm. Or is he or she left without escape from madness? Mm -hmm. Or he or she has special part in everyone's escape? Mm -hmm. He cannot, he can no more be left outside without a special function in the hope of peace than could the father overlook his son and pass him or her by in careless thoughtlessness. Oh, thank you. Does that make sense? Yeah. <clears throat> what is dependable except God's love? <clears throat> yes. And where does sanity abide except in God? The one who speaks for God can show you this in the alternative God chose especially for you. It is God's will that you remember this and so emerge from deepest mourning into perfect joy. Accept the function that has been assigned to you in God's own plan to show his son that hell and heaven are different, not the same. And what in heaven, and that in heaven, they are all the same without the differences which would have made all a hell of heaven and a heaven of hell had such insanity been possible. The whole belief that someone loses but reflects the underlying tenet God must be insane. For in this world, it seems that one must gain because another lost. If this were true, then God is mad indeed. Explanation point. But... <laughs> but what is this belief except a form of the more basic tenet sin is real and rules the world for every little game must someone lose and pay exact amount in blood and suffering for otherwise would evil triumph and destruction be the total cost of any gain at all you who believe that God is mad look carefully at this and understand that it must be either be God, or this must be insane, but hardly both. This is why it says you cannot serve what? Two masters. You either love one or hate the other. Now, here is the message to the title. Salvation is rebirth of the idea no one can lose for anyone to gain. And everyone must gain if anyone would be a gainer. Here is sanity restored. And on this single rock of truth can faith in God's eternal sameness rest in perfect confidence and in perfect peace. Reason is satisfied for all insane beliefs can be corrected here. And sin must be impossible if this is true. This is the rock on which salvation rests, the vantage point from which the Holy Spirit gives meaning and direction to the plain to the plan in which your special function has a part. For here, your special function is made whole because it shares the function of the whole. Remember, all temptation is but this. All temptation is but this. A mad belief that God's insanity would make you sane and give you what you want that either God or you must lose to madness because your aims cannot be reconciled. Death demands life, but life is not maintained at any cost. No one can suffer for the will of God to be fulfilled. No one can suffer for the will of God to be fulfilled. Look how many people have suffered because of so many different misunderstandings and different teachings and beliefs. Even to the point of sacrificing to the gods <laughs> salvation is god's will because you share it not for you alone but for the self that is the son of god he cannot lose for if he or she could could 
the loss would be his or her father's and in God no loss is possible and this is saying because it is the truth questions comments concern all right Heavenly Father, once again, we thank you. We love you. We adore you so much. We thank you for the Holy Spirit coming in and teaching us about our sanity. And we thank you for the rock of salvation. We thank you for greater revelation, greater manifestation as we go forth in this day, using us for signs, wonders, and miracles, our gifts and talents, that you get the glory down and the praise. Thank you for giving us travel and grace to and from our destination, that we make it back to our destination safely. Bless over those that are around us. Bless over the homeless in their journey. Bless them with water and provisions. Bless over those that are going through hardship, trial, and tribulation, that the Holy Spirit come in and comfort and touch their hearts. Bless over those who have lost loved ones, that you comfort and touch their hearts as well. Soothe them. Be with them. We thank you for all that you bless with from our homes, our food, our clothes, our finances, our transportation. Continue to bless over our children, our grandchildren, and our loved ones. Thank you for blessing over our laborers, our neighborhood those that are going around. We thank you for these things. We thank you for hearing us and have always heard us. We thank you for this wonderful word. In your mighty name we say, amen, amen, and amen. Amen. And you know what? We love you. <laughs> we'll prayerfully see you all tomorrow. We'll see you all in the spirit. You all have a blessed, wonderful day. Remember to tell someone you love, but tell yourself first you love. All right. Have a blessed one. Bye-bye, all. Thank you. You're welcome.